fighting monsters and all the stuff you saw on Clash of, Clash of the Titans. That's real. And they fighting Nephilim and just supernatural battles and all kinds of stuff. So, amen. And we're fighting supernatural battles. Amen. Every time you get depressed, somebody has launched warfare on you. Every time you get down, somebody has said something, done something, and sent something your way. We don't even think about that. Yeah. You ever wonder how you can be happy, gung-ho, all, I mean, yeah, and then all of a sudden? This could be the greatest church in the world one week, and then all of a sudden. Look at somebody say, this is war. This is war. <laughs> Look at somebody say, a time, a time. to fight. A time. Amen. Adamantbeliever.com forward slash a time to fight. Amen. All right, let me go through this. The message speaks for itself, so there ain't going to be a whole lot of ad libs, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> When a person denies truth for their own agenda, they will put themselves in a dangerous situa in dangerous situations and dysfunctional circumstances. You denied the truth and did something different, and it puts you in either a dangerous situation or a dysfunctional situation. Because the truth don't put you there. Well, I mean, there's only two options. The truth don't put you there. So that has to be decision making. And it has to be decision making that's not based on the truth. Can I make it plain in here? John 8 and 32 says, and ye shall know the truth and the truth will what? This means no one will have an excuse to say that they didn't know. You're going to know the truth. And only the truth's going to make you free. Everybody. Look at somebody say, everyone's going to know the truth. Everyone's going to know the truth. Now, whether you abide by it, believe it, act on it, that's up to you. But you're going to know the truth. Amen? Amen. I get prodded by the Holy Ghost to teach the truth. Regardless of how they feel. Regardless of how they treat you. Regardless of what they say. Regardless of how they threaten you, regardless of the ugly looks, the smirks and the mouth, mouth smacks, I got to preach the truth. Amen? Because you have to know the truth. You're going to be held accountable for what you do with the truth. But I'm going to be held accountable for whether I taught it or not. It's a double whammy for me. I got to obey it. And then I have to teach it. Right? I got to obey what I preach. And it ain't easy. Amen. I was working on this message. This message is called A Time to Fight. And I mean, Thursday, I, no, I finished the message Friday morning. Right after I finished the message Friday morning, I looked outside. And I saw the electrician and encore out there talking about this electricity and I'm not going into details but the devil has been busy so I saw him out there I went on the camera I went out there talked to him or whatever so then I called Eddie told him to send an email and long story short he emailed somebody told him you know hey uh, you know we need you to do this, this, this and this person sent me back the most condescending email I hate that. That, you know, little, I'm a very easygoing guy. Those of you that know me know I'm, I'm, I'm in chill mode. I'm just, I'm easy. <sighs> but when you talk to me like I don't know what I'm talking about or like our church is struggling, that bothers me. Because we, look at somebody and say, we in a good place. So don't do that. So I got mad. I got madder than I've been in five years. 
that's how mad I was. My body started tensing up, and I just start clicking and ticking. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> so I said, I'm a, you know, I'm finna, I'm finna call my man Steve, Steve Pipkin. He's he's a relative of ours, but he's a high power attorney. I'm finna call him, and we just about to just we finna <laughs> do. You know, I ain't called the elders or nothing. I'm just, in my mind, this is already done. I said, yeah, we about to do this. Then I told the brothers on the text, I just fired off. And then after I did all of that, God said, what's the name of your sermon? <laughs> time to fight. God said, this is not a time to fight. Yeah. He said, stay focused on me. I've already handled that. As we talk, I've already handled that. So I <sighs> had to let it go, Elder. The older you get, the harder it is to let it go. But I let it go, let it go. Then we got good news later on, got better news a little later, and God is doing what he said. But I mean... I got tested by my own sermon. Because I was about to say, now, change the name, take the A off and put, now is the time to fight. <laughs> but uh, but hey, God is working on me. Y'all pray for me. Pray that God keeps working on me on that. that but it only happens once every few years. And I fasted three days, what? Yeah, I fasted three days from Sunday through Thursday. And, you know, doing all of that. So the devil just, you know, he's like, let's see. Let's, let, let's see. Let's see. And so, amen. But I, hey, I passed the test. I'm here. Amen. Ain't nobody hurt. I didn't go put this suit on. <laughs> I would have looked like that in it. Hey. <laughs> but when a person denies truth for their own agenda, they will put themselves in dangerous situations and this one. And don't think something's wrong with me. You got stuff that make you mad too. Everybody got a hot button. <laughs> Does everybody have a hot button? There's that one button you delivered from everything else. Somebody could come put crack in your pocket and you not go pat your head not once. <laughs> but oh, if they cut you off and shoot that famous finger, something just, yeah! <laughs> that, that just does it. Now that makes me laugh. The finger and all that makes me laugh. I like to fight, pull up, I like to catch them, pull up next to them, and show them that I'm laughing. I want you to understand that I'm laughing. Amen. Now, I might have my right hand on something else, but I'm going to show you that I'm laughing. Just in case it goes sideways. I got to be, let me stop. Well, I am just, we go, yeah, we're definitely taking that out today. What is going on? Somebody stop me. Maybe, maybe I ain't delivered for Friday. Lord, it's seeping out another way. We need to bring the praise and worship back. He's still mad. He's still mad. Okay. But yes, so, amen. But. Anyway, I'm responsible for letting you know the truth. You're responsible for your children knowing the truth. Amen? And men, you're responsible for your wife and children knowing the truth. So God's going to hold you accountable for you obeying the truth. Then he's going to hold you accountable of whether or not you taught truth in your house. Amen. Amen. Yeah. In the Old Testament, people would consult the Lord to know when to fight their enemies. Isn't that something? Amen. They would consort, consult the Lord to know 
when to fight their enemy. This isn't even taught anymore. This isn't taught anymore. People don't teach this. Churches don't teach this. Before you fight, ask the Lord, should you? We just assume because it's the devil, God gave us power over the devil. It's time, oh, it's time for war. It's time to go in. Well, maybe not for you. Maybe you're not ready. Maybe it's not time. Or maybe God has already handled that. That's why you got to ask him. You got to consult with the Lord to know when to fight. My wife, no boy, I have just been in the bed, just about turning flips in the bed because I want to tell Landon something or Jonathan something, something I want to deal with. And I just did that, just turn it. But over the night, God has said, no, don't, don't say that. It's not time. Let that play out. Or let this or that or this. And I got to obey his instructions. Amen. And then after I do that, I see, oh, it happened another way. God did it another way. Amen. I remember Vicky, boy, Vicky did something online one time. And I saw it. And the Lord told me, he said, don't say nothing. One, that ain't your business no more. I'm like, but they're my kids. God said, that's not your business. I said, huh? He says, not your business. I'm driving. The Lord said, pull over. I pulled over. Pulled the car over. He said, pull over. I pulled over in a, in a vacant parking lot. And I called my wife. And I said, baby, I, I, just, <laughs> I can't do it. So I sat on my hands and cried in that car because I couldn't make that call. I would have been a busybody in my children's business. See, some of y'all don't know how to let your children go. But then you had problems out of your mother-in-law, mama, dad, all them in your business, and you telling her, oh, see, they always, oh, blah, 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 and then look at you. You another member of their family. And that was the hardest thing. You know, when my daughter, when she drove off, I let her go, and I was like, okay, I'm letting her go. I cried then, but I didn't know. I hadn't really let, let, let her go until they start experiencing stuff that I knew I could help them with. But unless they come and ask me, I got to let their process be their process or I will interfere and cause them, amen, to build me in to their process. Some stuff you got to just sit back and pray but you got to consult the Lord yeah. that was one of the toughest lessons I ever had to learn but I had to yeah. and man now I'm thankful I'm thankful I didn't get involved they doing you know God is blessing them Cam has become a great minister of the gospel and stuff so I just let the process hey just gotta let it work itself out amen you can't keep your kids around forever uh oh I don't care if they live in your house you can't keep them around forever amen cut that belly that what's that thing come out the belly the umbel the umbel it's umbelical we say it wrong the bellical cord. Now it's umbilical. <laughs> Cut it. Cut it. Remember that sketch on uh, In Living Color when <laughs> Jim Carrey was a grown man, still tethered. His mama pulling him with the belly button. <laughs> nah, that, that, and that's some of y'all. Some of y'all, and you wrecking your children's lives. They can't move on. They can't, they can't move on. They can't do, they can't fulfill their own purpose. Their process is hindered. You got to know how to do that as bad as it hurts. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm talking to somebody because I don't park right there unless God has got me there. Pick your fights, man. Consult the Lord. I promise you if you ask him. 
He ain't going to talk about your kids. He's going to talk about you. So consult with the Lord to know when to fight. 1 Samuel 23 and 2. This was David. He said, therefore David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I go and smite these Philistines? Is it time to fight them? And the Lord said unto David, go and smite the Philistines and save Keilah. But Saul asked God one time, he said, God, should I go and fight? And God wouldn't even talk to him because he wasn't in good standing. So you can't inquire of the Lord if you're not in good standing. I'm preaching in here. And we've all been in, in not good standing. You've been in bad standing before. Amen. You ain't strong enough then. You got to get stronger. That's what the fellowship of the saints is all about. We come here, this is like a Tesla charging station. We charge your battery in here. Amen. Get you to the levels that you need to be at. I know I'm preaching in here. Somebody mad about the kids. I don't care. Wish you could read some of the emails I get. Boy, I would have been married by now. I would have had a husband by now. My parents got me. My mama won't leave, let me. And that's not fair. Sure. We ought to always be on the side of what is right. But engaging in warfare should be something we ask God about. I don't care if it's, oh, this is the battle. It's good versus evil. That don't mean it's your battle. Man, demon come after you, you and you ain't ready, you gonna run. If you're not ready. Well, what you could have seen the older church. Man, when I would come speak, and sometimes demons would manifest. I remember one time a demon manifested, and I went to the back, and this girl jumped on the back of the couch and crouched on the back of the couch and was growling. Well, well, let me back it up. So about 20 minutes before that, all my Detroit preacher friends was in there. They was all on the altar. Just, come on, Jesus, uh, Jesus, all of them, all of them. Just, yeah, Jesus, uh, Jesus. And then that girl jumped up and ran to the back. So I went to the back. I was like, yeah, yeah, we went to, I went to the back. I saw on that couch, I looked around. But I don't get mad at people. I'd rather you do that than go in there and that demon read you your rights. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say. <laughs> Goodness. Amen. Just get on back. In the old church, they used to take all the kids and cover them up with Bibles. And if they didn't have enough Bibles, they used the hymnals. <laughs> I don't know. I still don't understand what that was. Y'all get in the back. Get in the back. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities, powers, against the rulers of darkness, spiritual weakness, and what? High places. Okay, so that's telling us that we need to consult the higher power so we'll know what we're fighting. Look, no, no. All of this stuff, none of this stuff is here on earth. This is not a fist fight. You can size somebody's body up and tell pretty much if you're going to win that fist fight. You can't do that with this. That's why God is saying, come ask me. Oh, a spirit is attacking your family. Somebody's attacking, the spirit's attacking your, your, your husband, your wife. Generational curses. Ask God. Ask God. Should I call that relative? And set them straight. Ask God. Yeah. This spiritual wickedness, man. 
Oh, that's Ahab. Remember him? Sometimes the battle is not ours, so we have to know when to fight and when to stand down. Yeah. David asks, Lord, will the men of Keilah, uh, Keilah deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, yeah, they're going to deliver thee. So what did David do? He didn't go there. He changed his plan. Why would I go get caught? But if he hadn't asked God, he could have gone and got killed. So he asked him before about the Philistines. God said, yeah, go get them. But he asked him about this. No. If you do this, you're going to die. Amen. I, I hope I'm talking to somebody. Before you call, try to have that meeting with the pastor. Or send that email. Before you do that, have you talked to God? Is it time for that? Can I keep preaching? God warned Ahab that he would lose. You're gonna... He warned him that he was going to lose the Ramoth Gilead battle. But because Ahab wasn't in a good place spiritually, he could not heed the warning and engage the enemy anyway. So that's what happens. When you engage anyway, God may be warning you, but you're not. You haven't been praying. You haven't been talking to God. You haven't been in your word. So you're making a fleshly decision about something that's spiritual. And when you do that, you're not going to hear the spiritual because you're not being spiritual. Right. I'm in here preaching this right now and you throwing it off yourself. What I said about your children, that was for you. you thrown, you've already thrown that off because you're not in the spiritual place to hear what I'm saying spiritually. Right. You're only considering how you feel right now. And that's what Ahab did. He was feeling away about Ramoth Gilead. That's how the whole chapter started. So no matter who came and told him what, his mind was already made up. It was Jehoshaphat that suggested, won't we get the prophets in on this? He's like, okay, get them all in except that one. Because I know what that one is going to say. Well, then if I can get all of them in and you don't want that one, then obviously you know what these others are going to say. And when you get to the point where you only go after what you want to hear and you can't receive correction from the word of God in this place, then you're in a bad place. Yeah. And you're not prepared for warfare because you can't hear the general. <laughs> oh, you think you're a general? No, I'm a pastor. And you picked me. <laughs> Amen. First Kings 22 and 18 says, And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you that he would prophesy no good concerning me, but evil? Y'all remember that from last week. I just had to say it again. But yeah, he's basically said, you know, if you go get this guy, he's going to go against all of our plans. They even tried to sub the guy when they went and told him, hey, man, when you come, here's what you say. Why even get him? No respect. Ahab had no respect for the word of God. None. None. Instead of seeing uh, Makai as someone that always told the truth, he saw him as someone that always tells him bad stuff. That he flipped it in his mind and made something spiritual natural. <laughs> but this message I'm preaching right now is spiritual Amen. that's what it is so you can't try to receive it naturally or it's going to make you mad if it goes against you Amen. Amen. Amen I was mad Friday but that was physical 
But then when I got before the Lord and I understood, no, spiritually, no, you can't do that. One, you lead these people. You set that example. You, you're just going to blow it. So I have to make a spiritual decision to pray and trust God. Amen. As hard as it was, it went against everything, every freckle. It went against every freckle. But I had to do Amen. Ahab, now this is, this, is, this is crazy. So Ahab, the Bible says he had humbled himself before God before. Ahab had humbled himself before and changed his fate by heeding the word of the Lord. So when he humbled himself, sat cloth and ashes, put over the cloth, covered his head, got before the Lord, God changed his mind. He said, I'm not going to bring this calamity on you because you've humbled yourself. So he knew how to do it. As wicked as his wife was, he got before God, humbled himself, and changed his fate. But because he didn't humble himself and heed the word of the Lord from Makai, he was selected to die at Ramoth Gilead, a battle created just to end him. First Kings 21 and 29 says, Seest thou how Ahab, God is saying, has humbled himself before me? Because he humbled himself before me, I will not bring the evil in his days, but in his son's days will I bring the evil upon his house. Yeah. Now, his days got shortened because <laughs> he should have humbled himself again. Can I keep preaching? I hope this is ministering to somebody. Sometimes God wants to close some doors, clean us up, and prepare us for a battle as well. Oh, I hope you can hear this. I'm going to say it real slow. Sometimes God wants to close some doors. You got a door open that if you go into this battle, something's going to crawl in it. So he want to close some doors. Then he want to clean us up. Your hands ain't clean enough to fight this one. See, y'all, that's, that's the bad thing about the internet, man. It's just all this, this buffet of preaching. You just pick something and then get charged up. And, oh, I'm going to go deal with this right now. Oh, God, blah, blah, blah. And, and you just, and, and, and some, you got something on your hand. You got a door or two open, a window maybe. You ain't ready for that fight. That's okay. Somebody, even though it's our fight, we must be what? So you may have to fight later. When you're ready. Psalms 51, 7. David, purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Where did this passage come from? This is after he fell into sin with Bathsheba. He wrote 51st Psalm. He fell into sin, fell into adultery, and he wrote this psalm. But if you go back, when Nathan came to rebuke him, Nathan told him a story about somebody. And David didn't say, well, let's consult the Lord about this guy and see should we punish him. No, David said, who is it? Let's go get him. <laughs> and Nathan said, uh, it's you. So at that moment, David wasn't ready to fight nothing. If Goliath had came in there right then, he'd have destroyed David. Because he wasn't in a good place. I, 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 this, this message might be, it might be too natural. Some of y'all are, you want everybody to think you pray all day, every day. And you know you don't. So you can't receive this. This is, a, I'm just trying to help you. Sometimes you're just not in a good place. Amen. You ain't finna cast the demon out after you done watched Shay Shay's Club for four hours. 
You done watch folk talk about folks, hate on folks, hate each other, die, lying, talking, talking, talking. You get up from that, you and you can't even pray good. You praying, hearing cat's voice in the scripture. And purge me with his son. That's what you hear. self-awareness you're gonna be up and down for the rest of your life you don't have no self-awareness you on the titan from six flags that's your life up and down that's why david had to go back and say lord purge me and wash me clean he had to pray that because at that moment he was not clean Sure, we can believe the hype messages and go out fighting every battle we see. But in order to win every battle and be effective, we must be careful to hear from God about it. Psalms 4 says, stand in awe and sin not. This is how you're ready to fight. Sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and do what? You ain't even been still. So that means you're confused when the battle comes because you haven't taken time. To get before God and hear him. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust where? In the Lord. In the Lord. Jehoshaphat was careful to consult the Lord in the battle he was facing. I mean if he hadn't told Ahab to consult the Lord, he probably would have died in that battle too. But he heard the prophet say, oh, oh, they're going to kill him. Okay, I'll go with you. <laughs> That's what he heard. He trusts the prophet. He heard the prophet say, oh, this ain't even about any of us. <laughs> the spirits and the, the, the hosts, they only want one person. Yeah, but Jehoshaphat was careful to consult the Lord about the battle he was facing even after that. Because he was in a what? A good place spiritually. Good place spiritually. He was able to accept the plan of the Lord and save his kingdom from a what? A brutal battle. 2 Corinthians 22 says, Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side of Syria. And behold, they be in Hazazon Tamar, which is Engadi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to do what? Seek the, Lord. Seek the Lord. A great multitude, way more people than he had coming. And it was three different companies. And the thing that really got Jehoshaphat was one of these companies was the one that God wouldn't let them fight. when they Because it was Esau's, Edomites. Wouldn't let the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. Wouldn't let them fight them. So now Jehoshaphat is like the... We let these folk go and now they have risen up and now they're getting ready to destroy Judah. So Jehoshaphat was like, wait a minute, we got to go and seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. So all Judah gathered themselves together. Everybody came together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, everyone came together to see. What to do? Amen. 
See, that's why we're coming in here. That's why we're coming in here to see what to do. The world is getting crazy. We need answers. We need to know what to do. That's what prayer is for. That's what, amen. Summary. When it's time to decide whether or not to fight, we must do what? Consult the Lord and his truth. But this does what? Requires our willingness to line up with his plan. God will do his part, but guess what? You have to do yours. Many today are dealing with what? Depression. Anxiety. Listen to this, y'all. Well, y'all, oh, can y'all hear me, please? Many today are dealing with depression, anxiety, insomnia, and fatigue because they are fighting without the backing of the Holy Spirit. They are engaging in fights, issues, and conflicts that don't concern them and bringing enemies into their lives that they could have avoided. When you post certain things that you should not, Forward information that you should not. Or speak on matters that do not concern you. You welcome evil spirit and demonic attacks into your life that, could, that you could have avoided had you sought permission from the Lord to engage. Yeah, we're so used to it. Oh, I'm just going to post this. Oh, I'm just going to say this. Oh, I'm just going to do this. Then ask the Lord. Then consult the Lord. Lord, should I do this? We are so used to posting, commenting, liking, and subscribing to content. That's what it's, that's what it's for. Without ever asking God if we should. The devil is enjoying the web that he has created because he can get your business, your thoughts, your feelings, and your participation whenever he desires. You end up unhealthy, unspiritual, financially struggling, and unaware of where the attacks in your mind and life are even coming from. It's because you neglected to check with God before you engaged the enemy. The internet is killing people. TikTok, all that witches have got on there and they have figured out a way. If you show the wrong thing and then say something they don't like, they'll put a curse on you. And it could kill you. I know people that have died but were forewarned about a curse. On the internet. Because we think, well, it's just there. And we don't realize. No, it's worldwide. So there are some pretty high level spiritual activity associated with this when the devil wants there to be. It's a way up. It's never a good way up. Yeah. But we just make decisions on the way on. Hey, let's just post it. Just put it up. Just post it. Just post it. Boy, if, if folks saw everything I posted, I probably got a, the, the thousand posts I got ready to post. Stuff I, to say in videos, all of that. And God said, no, take that out. Don't, don't, don't post that. Because I consult him. Amen. Because I understand how it works. Well, I'm just going to launch my ministry and I'm just going to do this and I'm there. Oh, you, you didn't get any spiritual advice. You didn't get any counsel. You didn't get anything. You're just going to just launch it <laughs> on the web. Can I keep preaching? The devil is enjoying this web, man. Because he, he, I mean, he just got, he got folks. You end up unhealthy, unspiritual, financial, all this stuff, just unaware. You don't even know where it's coming from, why your life is in upheaval. It's because you neglected to check with God before you engaged the enemy. Sure, we have power over the devil. I'm not sitting here saying the devil has power over you. I'm not. But the only reason we have power over the devil is because of the Holy Ghost. 
So you, if you ain't any good with the Holy Ghost, you don't have power over the devil. Uh-oh. Somebody didn't want to hear that. Oh, the Holy Ghost. I got saved and filled with it when I was. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure David was pretty spiritual too until Bathsheba. we go around fighting without being accompanied by the spirit then we will lose God has to grant us his power to operate against his enemies but a lot of times we see our brothers and sisters in the faith as the enemies and try to wield our power against them this is what the internet is designed for to make us fight one another with no regard of God's call on people God's mercy on people and God's judgment on people so now you're fighting blind. You don't know what God has said because you didn't ask him. You don't know what God is using that person for because you didn't ask him. You just got mad because somebody else was mad. You just went to talking because you felt like talking. You just went to posting because you could. We cannot fight blindly and we cannot fight physically. We must rely solely on the power of God because our fight is what? Spiritual. It's time to be still and inquire of the Lord before engaging in warfare. When the devil picks a fight with us, just like Jehoshaphat, we must stand still and get our orders from the Lord before we fight back. Amen? Amen? Look at somebody say, get your orders from the Lord. Before you fight back. Just because you save, man, don't mean you need to fight every fight. Just because you all powerful don't mean your power was for that. I know I just preached in this place. Let's go back to the story. 2 Corinthians 20 and 13. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Everybody. So Jehoshaphat said, hey. We need to know what to do. So everybody come out. Bring the children too. They all stood before the Lord. Then Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jeel, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the spirit of the Lord in the congregation. So the spirit comes on the prophet. Everybody's standing watching to find out, okay, what is God about to tell us to do? He says, hearken. Ye, all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat. Everybody listen. Thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great most. Don't count them, and don't worry about how many it is, for the battle is what? Now what if Jehoshaphat them had just it's time to fight for God and ran down there and it wasn't even their fight it wasn't a time to fight said the battle is not yours this is God's battle tomorrow go ye down against them behold they come up by the cliff of Ziz and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeriel Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. If you ask God, I promise you, most of the stuff you would have got involved in, God would have said these words to you. You do not have to fight in this battle. You have enough praying for your family, praying for your husband, your wife. You got enough. This one isn't yours. I know it made you mad. I know it made you angry. I know you wanted to do something about it and show and flex and show yourself. But is it your battle? He said, you shall not, you don't even need to fight in this battle. All you got to do is set yourselves, stand ye what? Do what? Stand what? Still. And see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow, Go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. 
And all of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korhites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. So instead of fighting, they could just already praise the Lord because they don't have to fight. And rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. This is leadership. He says, Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. But then I like this part. This is what Ahab didn't understand. He said, Believe his what? Believe his prophets. <laughs> So shall ye prosper. Anybody prosper by believing his prophets? Believe his prophets, you will prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. And that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army. And to say, praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the Children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. You know what an ambush is, right? Bum rush. He set up an ambush. He set ambushes against them, ambushments against them, so that little fights would break out here, break out here, break out here, just a bunch of bum rushing. Who was they fighting? Each other. Why was they fighting each other? Because God made them. <laughs> For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir. So they got together, went against uh, the Edomites, and utterly to slay and destroy them. And then after they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they started killing each other. Until everybody was dead. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude and behold, there were dead bodies falling to the earth and no one escaped. Three whole companies, armies, destroyed totally without an enemy laying their hands on them. Look at somebody and say, God is something else. I mean, God went in there and, but you know, I, I, all, I can only imagine what the conversation was like in heaven. Okay, who's going to go down there and confuse these folks? Get in their heads and make them think that the other people said something about their mama. I mean, it, I don't know how it went down. I don't know. I don't know how it went down. But, I mean, they killed each other. And this is the best part. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoils of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels. Okay, this part makes no sense at all. Y'all fighting. It's a war. Why do y'all have... <laughs> so that means another spirit came down and told him, oh yeah, make sure you pack up all your money. Because we going to need that. Yeah, 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 Judah going to need that. They packed up all this stuff. Why you got your stuff on you? And he said they were stepping over dead bodies that had jewels, precious jewels and riches, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. It took three days to, to keep going back for three days to gather all the riches off the dead folks. So not only... By consulting God, not only did they not have to fight, but they prospered. They got rich by listening to the voice of the Lord. Everyone stand to your feet. You got to know when to fight, man. You got to know when it's your battle. Yeah. And you need help. 
That's something that you have to establish in you to know, no matter how angry you are. Lord, are you speaking? Did you just tap me on my show? Do I need to take it down a peg or two? You need to be sensitive to that so that you don't make decisions based on how you feel or how things look. This battle right here went against everything they felt and everything they were looking at. This was something that they needed divine intervention to fix for them. But they had to consult God to know what to do. So if you need help with that, you want God to help you to be sensitive to that, just come on down. Lord, I, hey, I, you know, I need to be sensitive to know when to hold them and fold them. <laughs> Kenny Rogers wrote a gospel song <laughs> called The Gambler. <laughs> you got to know when to walk away. You got to know when to run. But you got to know and you got to consult God. You got to consult God. And this is something you have to learn. And it's hard sometimes. It's hard. It's hard. I know. It's hard. It's hard. Some of the things that are said when I'm preaching, I know it's hard to receive sometimes. Because it's going against flesh, attitude, what happened to you when you was young, what you had planned to do, what you wish you could have done, what you trying to do, all of that. I get it. But man, you got to ask God. If you consult God, are you going to not obey him? I think everybody that came to this altar want to obey him. That's what you're coming for, right? I want to do what he says. It don't have nothing to do with me. I'm just the vessel bringing you the message. But there's a time to fight and a time to stand down. A time to say something and a time to not. A time to be quiet. Time to engage, time to walk away. It's a time. There's a time. And I want to be sensitive to that time. I don't want to miss that. I don't want to mess that up. I don't want to botch that. That's going to put me on a roller coaster. And my life becomes a roll of the dice. I'm not, I'm not playing craps with my life. I need to know what an assurance this is what God wants me to do. Amen? Amen? Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this message. Thank you, God, for the understanding. Thank you, Father God, because I believe you spoke this so that we can get to the place where we can come to you with everything that we're thinking everything that we're planning everything that we're wanting and desiring everything that we want to accomplish everything all of it we want to bring it to you and consult you Lord so that we don't have to lose it so that it go away so that it's not a roller coaster so that Father God we will have stability in you knowing what you say what you do is in our favor and if you're the God of all gods and God of this universe then you can plan our lives you can plan our life we can't we're not gods of the universe we don't know what's going to happen next week tomorrow we can't see like that we, we're humans confined to a 3D reality but God you're limitless timeless alpha and omega so you can plan our lives and help us avoid disappointments. You can tell us when to fight and when to stand down. You can tell us when we're not ready to fight and clean us up and prepare us for battle. You can tell us, Father God, when it's time to engage and when we'll be most effective. Father God, you can see it all and plan it all and you know it all. So we give you glory and honor right now. Right now for taking control of our lives. We give it to you right now. Come on and lift your hands up. There's battles we're facing 
right now there's battles we're facing right now should we fight or should we stand down speak it to us Lord speak to our hearts Holy Spirit come in divine presence and give us your words of wisdom teach us Lord teach us Lord speak to us Lord speak to us speak to us direct us steer us navigate we give you Father God the will and let you navigate our lives tell us when where how you don't even have to tell us why just when where how help us God as we're raising our children help us with this Lord as we're strengthening our marriages help us with this God on our job, in our finances. Help us with this, Lord. Stability. Consistency. Help us, Lord. And we'll give you the glory and the honor for it. Just as you steered Jehoshaphat and his army, you're going to steer us the same way. And when it's not time to fight, we won't have to fight. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen.